Are you waiting for the last few missing tools to be added to Luminar Neo? Well, with update 1.2.0, we're one step closer. In this video, I'll tell you about what's been added, yes, we have dodge and burn, and the two last things that we're still waiting for. You'll also learn about a brand new feature called extensions, the first one being HDR Merge. I'll briefly show you how it works, and if you stick around to the end, you'll find out if you qualify to get it for free. Hi, I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor. I teach beginning and intermediate photographers like you how to improve your photography from capture and camera all the way through to the end of the editing process. Luminar is a big part of my photo editing workflow and I'm excited to see where they're taking Luminar Neo next. So if you're ready, let's dig in and see what's new in update 1.2.0. As I mentioned a moment ago, in this Luminar Neo update, we now have Dodge and Burn. They've also done several bug fixes, four for Mac and six for Windows, to be exact. There's a couple of new things in the main catalog interface. First of all, you'll notice a new side panel here on the right. Previously, the EXIF information was down in the bottom left corner. Now it's in the top right. And it's also a panel that you can hide. Just click this button here. So you can show it or hide it. Also on this same panel, you can like an image or favorite it here, rotate it, and you can also copy the adjustments. For example, if I want to paste them onto this image, now you can just do it really quickly right here in the catalog module. So that makes it much simpler and quicker to copy and paste adjustments. You'll also see that I have the HDR merge panel already installed. I'll come back to that one in a moment. Let's take a look at how to find the dodge and burn tool. If you go into the edit module with any image and you go down to the bottom under the professional tools, now you'll see dodge and burn. The brushes are pretty straightforward. You could change the size, the softness and the strength and choose lighten or darken. I'll just do a quick darken to show you how it works. I'll just darken these leaves here in the foreground. Once you've painted your dodge and burn, you can also dial it back with the amount slider. Likewise, you can also erase any previous dodging or burning that you've done. So if you've been waiting for this tool, here it is. However, if you follow my channel, you'll also know that there's another way to do dodging and burning and I previously demonstrated that using the develop tool. So personally, I'm not sure how much I'll actually use the dodge and burn tool because I think I have a better way of doing it. If you want to see my dodge and burn hack, there's a link to that video in the description below. Likewise, I'd love for you to join me every week in my live stream here on my YouTube channel. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit notifications. I do photo editing demonstrations using subscriber submitted images, which you could participate in as well, every week here on my channel. There's a link for that as well below, or you can get to it by going to youtube.com forward slash digital photo mentor forward slash live. That page will tell you the next time and date that I'll be live and you can join in. I mentioned earlier that there are just a couple more things that we are waiting for in Luminar Neo. One of them is the cloning and healing tool. I'm sure that that will be coming very soon. The other one for me is a fully functioning undo feature. You'll notice that I copied and pasted the adjustments onto this image and I overwrote all the other edits I'd done previously. I would love to be able to undo and get back that one step. So for me, that's a major one. Cloning and healing, also something people are waiting for. So fingers crossed, they should be coming soon. Now let's take a look at the HDR merge. You'll also notice once you install this Luminar Neo update and launch the program, there's a new little icon next to the logo up here. And it looks like a puzzle piece. This is how you get the new extensions. If you click on it, you get a box that looks like this. You can see it's indicating that I've already got HDR merge installed. If you don't, it will tell you how to get it. Okay, while we're on this dialog box, let's talk about pricing for this extension and who gets it for free. If you already own Luminar Neo, 
and you've previously purchased Aurora HDR, you get the HDR Merge extension for free. So all you need to do is wait until July 28th, which is the release date for the HDR Merge extension, check your account on Skylum, and you should have an activation code for it. Then just follow the steps to install it. If you don't already own Aurora HDR, then the HDR Merge is available for $49. That's a pretty good price considering Aurora HDR was a lot more expensive than that. If you currently do not own Luminar Neo, but you do own Aurora HDR, you can purchase Luminar Neo with a loyalty discount because you're already a Skylum customer and you'll get the new HDR Merge extension included. Additionally, if you purchase Luminar Neo under the new annual subscription model, you also get the new extension for free. If you're not sure what category you fall under, drop a note in the comment area below and I'll try and answer your questions for you. And if you decide to purchase it prior to July 28th, there is a couple of free bundles that come along with it, including some HDR presets and some skies. Now let's see what it can do and how it works. I've got a couple of sets of bracketed images that I can use for HDR merge. You can drag up to 10 images into the panel to merge to HDR. So I'm going to grab this set of five and you just drag them in here and drop. Then there's a little gear icon up here. If you haven't shot your images on a tripod, you can do auto alignment. And if you need to do any deghosting or ghost reduction, meaning if something moved from one image to the next, you have the ability to do that here and choose which image to use and how much to deghost. I don't need to do either with these images, so I'm just going to click Merge to merge them into an HDR. Once they're merged, you'll see them disappear from this panel and you've got a new image. Luminar also creates a new folder to put them in for you called HDR Merge. This is actually something that I'd like to see changed. I'd like to be able to choose the place or the location where the new merged image gets saved. This feedback has already been given to Skylum. So we'll see where that goes. Now that the image is merged, you can edit it as usual using Luminar Neo. Right out of the box, look at how realistic and natural looking this HDR merge is. One of the things that critics often said about Aurora HDR is that it was too over the top or too unrealistic. So I think they've done some work here to solve that issue. If I didn't tell you this was a merge of several images and was HDR, would you know? The histogram is really well balanced and you can develop from here using all the tools that you already know how to use inside Luminar Neo. If you need some assistance learning Luminar Neo, I have a complete course available. I'll put a link in the description area below for you as well. Overall, I'm really excited to see where they go with these new extensions for Luminar Neo. People are already talking about maybe they'll do panorama or focus stacking or other options. So I'm excited for the possibilities. I really like the direction that Skylum is going with Luminar Neo, making it a one-stop complete tool for all your photo editing needs. So I'm eager to see what's next. If what's next for you is more Luminar Neo learning, click here to get more tips and tricks. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you don't miss any new videos. Until next time, take care.